This video is brought to us by the Indiana Arts Commission. Uh, they were wonderful enough to give me a grant to uh, continue with my art and also to continue to help teach you guys a little bit more about jewelry smithing. Because of them, I'm going to be able to teach you guys some more techniques and tell you about more different kinds of tools for jewelry smithing, not just wire weaving. So I uh, do look forward to those videos coming up and thanks Indiana Art Commission. Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes My Way. Uh, pardon the echo, some of this is going to be recorded at the gallery that I um, participate at. So we are going to be doing a little short video about iridescent feathers on birds. Um, of course, birds are the only ones that have feathers, so you know, I don't know what I'm thinking. But this is how I begin. I start off with a photo and trying to make sure that I get the iridescence correct because this male wood duck versus his female counterpart. His female counterpart is pretty dull in comparison. She has a little bit of the iridescence on the top of her head, but even that is quite dull in comparison to our main man here. So uh, we're just going to be making a little video going over that. And this is all in watercolors. I use Reeves, but that's just me. And yeah, so the first thing I typically do, I look at my photo and I just get the colors down first. All the iridescence and how the iridescence changes from blue to green. The green goes to a yellow. The yellow turns into orange and red and purple. That is typically the way of it, but the blue sometimes makes its own choices when it shows up between the uh, the red and the green. And sometimes when it shows up, the yellow is nowhere to be found. So I definitely recommend looking at a photo to get something accurate for that. And once you get done laying down all your color, you're ready for the next. So the next step, uh, you can pretty much put your color down with any filbert paintbrush you want. Uh, that part of it really doesn't matter that much because a good chunk of our color is going to get covered up. But I am using a 10 over 0 size paintbrush. You can see that guy is pretty tiny. And that is what I'm going to be using to get all these little feather marks and the dark grooves and laying my black over the top of all of this. So from this point on, as far as getting that... Uh, now, as you can see, the, the rainbow shine the way it is. From here on, I'm going to take a little bit of water, and this is a very tiny paintbrush. Um, even though it's a 10.0, which is for, I mean, that doesn't mean anything from company to company to company, but uh, it is a pretty small paintbrush for this company, at least is from what I've seen. And I'm not even going to use the whole thing. I'm basically, and I, I would show it to you, but my camera will not focus on it. Uh, I'm basically going to be using like the very, very, the longest two hairs on this whole thing to do this part of, uh, of my piece. So what I'm going to do, got the water on my paintbrush and I'm going to mix it really, really dark. I want this water to be as black as I can make it and I'm gonna I got a little water drop on the edge of my uh, my water cup that I just rehydrated a little bit more so that way I don't lose a lot of my pigment I'm gonna mix up a little bit more all right and that ought to be good enough now for this part it's okay to rotate your painting as you need to you know whatever makes it comfortable for you uh, since I'm going to be going this direction making lines going this way around his head I'm actually going to end up turning my uh, my painting like so because it's much easier to do this than it is to take your painting and go like this especially with the teeny tiny little black marks I'm going to be making even upside down is a little bit better for me because there again I'm using the natural curve of uh, how my bones and your joints basically want to work so I'm going to be I'm going to find those two little dark hairs and very delicately pretty much put black lines in there 
You can have them vary a little bit from, you know, line to line. You're going to have some dark areas, some light areas. Um, you can even have them crisscross a little bit, but the overall goal is to follow the shape of the head that we have here. So now that I've gotten to this point here, this area is brighter. So I'm using a little bit more watered down black than anything. And I'm just coming in and again, using just the, those itty bitty hairs and just putting some of those lines in here still, but I'm not putting them in nearly as thick or as much see here and I'm also kind of defining like okay what needs to go back into straight black again which be right up here in the corner top ish area of the eye but there's still this color here and all this is going to go in black And the nice thing about, even though you're doing some lighter areas of black, it's still letting some of that color come through, some of the greens and you know that, that rainbow that's going on. It's still letting some of that come through, which is how it would be. I'm starting to kind of arch some of these lines a little bit so that way it feels like it is following the shape of his head. And then it's going to get really bright in here again, kind of following his little ducky cheekbones. I think I need to add a little more blue up there. And it's nice and bright up in here, so I'll just kind of go in here and add very light lines, just so that way this isn't quite so shockingly abrupt from black to uh, to the shine areas. And all of this area is pretty dark.
now I am going over this with a black that has a lot more water in it so that way I can kind of drag this paintbrush over the top of the paper and kind of only hitting the top of the paper a little bit as opposed to uh, getting down into each and every little groove just to get a little bit more of a texture going on. Consistency is not quite right, a little too watery. Okay, let's try this. Now you see I always start back in these really black areas uh, before I start putting anything down in the area where I actually need it. One, so that way I can get back into the groove of using the right part of the paintbrush instead of, you know, accidentally using too much and making my lines too big. And then I can get the right consistency checked out as well. And I'm going to come in and soften a few areas as well so that way it doesn't feel like it's a wood carving or anything along those lines. Some of the black is just a tiny bit on the sharp side. So I can just come in with just a little bit of water on my paintbrush. And since all that black's pretty much dry, I can re-wet it and kind of move it around just a tiny bit. Maybe lighten some areas up. I'm trying to pull it back into the blacker areas and if you see that things are starting to get muddy and not maybe quite doing exactly what you want then it's time to clean the paintbrush off like so now I get my I get my fingers involved with my watercolors as well you can also use a paper towel or what have you but same difference See if we can't soften a few more areas here and there, mainly around in here. It needs a little more work. So I did a little bit more work on this and just kind of blending some areas through here and there. Adding some lighter areas of black and some couple, not very much, but a few areas of darker black. And also coming in and finding these little white areas where my black is not as perfect as I want it. And just kind of filling those in. And to get black black with watercolors, it takes a few, a few layers. So no big deal there. And there we have it. So there is a nice, simple, easy way to add iridescence or the appearance of iridescence with watercolors. I do hope you guys enjoyed this short little video. Please like, subscribe, comment, leave questions if you have them. I'm more than happy to try to answer questions when I can. And I do hope you guys all have a good one. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Bye.